another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. I made the weirdest face. You really did. What was whenever that about? we, I was reading what was on the screen, not oh, okay. like we didn't just write it. Mm-hmm. And I do this thing where if I am, I'm focusing on something, I kind of squint. I'm like, huh? you should never do that again. Huh? Please don't ever do that again. That's really awkward. What's that say? <laughs> Guys, as always, <laughs> we have to say uh, this episode is sponsored by CardsHere.com, the best place to go and buy and sell trade sell and trade all the good things <laughs> uh online it's a really great place if you want to get cheap cards uh you can add cards to your want list and then basically throw money into it and get those cards from other people oh yeah I'm it's fantastic say, we're privileged to say kevin not that we have to say yeah i didn't mean to sound that way <laughs> but like <laughs> yeah we're we're very lucky to to be working with them so go check them out their link is in the description below uh we've got an interesting episode for you today i really am excited about this one uh yeah a lot of cool stuff to talk about but uh the schedule for today obviously we are gonna have our random card of the day we are then going to talk about 2019 core 2019 spoilers there are a lot of good cards a to talk about very very uh one track episode this time yeah but very singular tracked but a lot of cool stuff to to discuss and then yes. of course our question of the week and then our crack of packs sponsored by grand slam so let's kick it off with our random card of the day in three, two, one. Wizened snitches. <laughs> Wizened. <laughs> Wizened. Excuse I think. me. I think you're Is right. Is that right? Uh, three and a blue for a one three fairy rogue with flying. Uh, players play with the top card of their library revealed. Um, mm. I, <laughs> I think it's cute. That's really interesting. Fairy tribal, right? Um, Not really in Ravnica, though, I guess. This was originally printed in Ravnica. Right, right, right. That's I mean, actually definitely not for the time, but, no, but I don't like, think it even sees very tribal for four mana. That's no, not, that's way really, too bad. Uh, uh, not a very good card. It's no. an uncommon. I think it's cute. It does give you information, right? Like, trying to find the plus side here. I think it's great that you get information. I also think it's cool that it has evasion and all that, but it only is dealing one damage a turn. Yeah, so it's not like, not like... Yeah, it's not super stoked by that by any means. But um, getting information on your opponent's deck is good. But the problem is you're also giving information on your deck, right? So it's like, right. it doesn't, I mean, it's good. You can kind of play around stuff. But like, at the same time, it's really, you're just helping each other out. I feel like I'm, the push here is the blue, in theory, is always going to be one step ahead. Yeah, I so mean, that's that the idea. They know what they need to answer, <clears throat> should they? I mean, I like, like a turn one, um, oh, what's the... Fairy Miscreant. No, no. I don't know. Maybe I was just not. saying another fairy. It's the one that lets, <laughs> lets you look at your opponent's hand, but oh, it's not oh. a black spell. It just lets you look at it. Um, Peak? Maybe. Peak lets you look at your it's a It's hand. a one mana blue, blue yeah, instant. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I like that, so you know what's in their hand. You play this eventually. Yeah. You I have mean... semi-perfect info. Like, I don't know. There's a lot to make this card work, so I'm not... There's setup, right? Yeah. Like, if you're going to yeah, try yeah. and make this work, there's setup, and I just don't think it's worth it. It seems really bad to me. Yeah. Um, no. I don't... I, I can't think of a place where this would be good, unfortunately. No, and that's a, that's a really weird thing to think yeah, about. Yeah, because normally it's like in limited, yeah. yeah. Or like, yeah, there are places limited for it, command- but like this just doesn't seem good anywhere. Yeah, limited or commander are kind of the two buckets that cards fall into yeah, that don't yeah. fit a like eternal format. Mm-hmm. But this guy, I don't he really... really is bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of just not impressed. Not at all. I don't like it. I mean, it'd be, it'd be kind of cute in commander, maybe in a group hug deck but a group hug deck i yeah. guess yeah but i i don't know it just seems bad to me i yep i think there are better ways to get that yeah, perfect absolutely. information no, I, so uh, like i wouldn't go for that no, we're in the same boat yeah i don't know why it costs four that's what I, it's a one three like if it had better like stats that. like at least then it has like some some damage make it a output. one one make it cost two yeah that would be fine or if you're gonna keep it at four like make it a two three or a three three i don't think that's unreasonable. 2-3 would maybe, still not be very good, but, like, it would be better. I, I would think take if, it. I mean, if I think it's a 3-3, three, three, you gotta take away flying for 4. You think so? Yeah, a 3-3 three, three with flying for 4 that, that you see. I mean, yeah, that's hard. fair, because limited it would be busted. Yeah. But, like, 2-3, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Still not great. No. 2-4. <laughs> Kev, do you wanna, <laughs> do you wanna talk about great cards now? I do. Let's talk about not terrible cards. Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> boys and girls... Magic players of all ages. Yes. We get another core set after, um, what's it been, three years? Three Four years? Four years? Was it 2015? 
That and then we had Origins after that. Oh, that's right. Um, so it's been four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. just to like oh. give some background very quickly before we get into right. the specific cards, I'm really stoked about them bringing back core sets. Um, yeah. Not necessarily for me as a player, but for new players, I think it's a really good segue into the game. But I think in this instance, they've done something that I don't think we've really seen before, where they kind of just packed in a ton of value into a core set. Well... Here's something I love about core sets. Yeah. Um, it gives them a chance to address standard without having to deal with, like... The story. Yes. Yeah. Thematic issues. Yeah, yeah. So, because that's always the the battle with Magic's design, right? Is... Yes. W we have this theme. Every set is on theme. It's telling a story. Um, but in doing that, sometimes we lose sight of <laughs> uh, the balanced nature, yeah, shall we say? yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of like, okay, well, I guess some examples go back <laughs> to like Theros, maybe most recently where yeah. specifically the theme kind of really hurt. Yeah, you know? it definitely hurt. Uh, Devotion for a while was like the... It was the deck. End of story. Devotion, really, really black. Mono really black. Gray Merchant. <laughs> Taking it. it home, man. Gary. Gary. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, you're exactly right. And yeah. I think... To your point, you know, core sets give the opportunity to print cards that are going to mm -hmm. kind of bring the power level back up for the other decks. and right. Or kind of settle things down, print hate cards for the decks mm -hmm. that are taking mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but no, you're exactly right. I think that's kind of awesome. That's the great part about yeah. them. That, yeah, that's what I like them. I like them um, for, well, one reason. Another yeah, reason is there's I'll, usually some cool stuff. There is usually a few cool cards. I'll say with this set, it seems like they went really overboard. You think? Um, yeah, in comparison to past ones, I'm actually really stoked oh, about sure, this. Yeah. Uh, but I also, again, and to the original point I mentioned, I really like that these are a good intro for new players because mm -hmm. you kind of push the story aside for these. Mm -hmm. You look at it it's purely from a playability standpoint. And so it's like, okay, is this card good? Is this card bad? It teaches a limited really well because it's a little bit more stripped down for the most part. Yeah. Um, and so you can get a handle on the mechanics a little bit easier and things like that. And so for that reason, I really appreciate that they're bringing it back to hopefully get some of these new players back in. Yeah. You also, um, I mean, you get to learn the colors kind of personalities. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a cycle in this that teaches kind of like enemy colors in a way. Yeah. 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 You know? Um, and, and it's cute. They're not like great. But they're not great. It's cute. I mean, generally speaking, in the past at least, course sets have never been fantastic for like... No. playability sake you i know think what I mean? the titans maybe are the titans are like the best example the cards the that got printed in core yeah, sets yeah. that like held their um mystique might yes be the right word i, I would say. definitely say so and you i think know. i mean that's not to say there aren't any good cards like bane slayer angel was in a core set and that's a oh, great yeah. card but that's like true. that was just one card you know what i mean like yeah. here we actually have some some interesting stuff yeah. for some very different formats too which Certainly. i think is interesting that's true and some are reprints some are yeah not. exactly okay uh we'll, go ahead we'll kick it off yeah, with yeah. a uh, an oldie but a newie oh i love this card. you want to call it an oldie but a newie an oldie but uh, a newie tezzeret <laughs> is back artifice master he does some cute stuff yes and then he does some crazy stuff yeah so briefly <laughs> uh his plus one created one one colorless thopter artifact creature token with flying create one ones with flying gets you protects an itself yeah gets you an artifact not too shabby yeah uh zero mm. Mm. draw a card if you control three or more artifacts draw two cards instead would you like divination on a stick uh I love <laughs> divination on a stick. that's awesome uh then for an ultimate minus nine you get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step search your library for a permanent card put it onto the battlefield then shuffle your library so you want to you want any permanent ever produced instant, instant tutor <laughs> Um, Any permanent? Do you need Urborg all of a sudden? There you go. So I'm going to pose a question to you. Okay, bring it. When you first play this, yeah. do you think you will plus or do you think you will zero most of the time? Um, okay, most of the time, I'm probably... And do you think you go for the ultimate? So the decks that he... Uh, what format, first off? Let me clarify. What well, where do you think he's good, we should say? Oh, standard, for sure. Standard, definitely. For sure. Yeah, yeah. He's a five mana planeswalker, so he's a little bit high. Yes. Um, so I don't think I don't think I don't think it hits any other formats. Modern, probably not. No, um, I think there's better options for yeah. stuff like this. Yes. Um <clears throat> so modern, probably not. Standard, yeah. 
I mean, Commander, definitely. Yeah, um, definitely. Commander. So I think in Commander, zero all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's not scary enough on his own, like, instantly mm-hmm. to warrant a Thopter. Yep. Um, in Standard, the decks, the deck I want to play him in would be the <laughs> Constructs deck we talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You know? We still need to build that Make deck, it Grixis man. Constructs. Grixis Constructs. So, and in that deck, with it being so aggressive, I've already got Artifacts. I'm, you know, zero. Yeah, I'm I think that's right. Cards. Um, and I'm, that was what my question was, because obviously the ultimate is super powerful, mm-hmm. right? Like, that is yeah. massive. But uh, I am i don't think you go for it unless you're in Commander. If you're in Commander, right. then you do whatever you want because it's Commander. But, like, yeah. in Standard, I think nine times out of ten, you're just going to zero this most yeah, of the time. I think so, too. And, I mean, in the decks you play, it's an artifact deck. You're going to draw two cards. That yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. That is great. Yeah. Um, he gets... You'll probably get two activations out of it, probably. Um, yeah, with him coming safe. in at five, you know, him at five is actually kind of important mm-hmm. too, because I mean, five is a decent number, right? Like, it's not. Yeah, they're gonna have can, to swing in a couple times with a couple creatures, probably. Yeah, probably um, he will survive a lot. Unless yeah, yeah. They're playing green. Uh, <laughs> yes, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm probably zeroing. Uh, his there's a card that lets you activate planeswalkers abilities twice yes uh oath of teferi right yep so with that i think yeah you can do both oh my gosh that would be insane right yeah you can draw cards you could copters you could just draw four cards (laughs) or you could draw four cards or you can make two copters and then maybe there's a deck there and then in three turns you can yeah get any card you want Oh, maybe there's a a deck building session that needs to happen there. That seems really sweet. I mean, there's there's a lot of play with him. Yeah, definitely. Um, he yeah, he's interesting. Good card. Very good card. Yeah, I'm kind of stoked about him. Sweet. Um, what was the next one you want to talk uh, about? The second one on my list, Gore Claw. I don't know where that is. He's a green card. I assume a little further down. There he ah, is. There he is. The fun fact: bears are my favorite creature. Did you know well, that? bear tribal. Did you know that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Say less. Uh, no, Gorkla, terror of a uh, word that starts with Q. Uh, call, si- call Sisma? Call Sisma? Carl Sagan? Gorkla, terror <laughs> of something. Uh, creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. Whenever Gorkla, terror of Carl Sagan attacks, each creature you control power four or greater gets plus one, plus one against trample until end of turn. Kevin, why am I talking about this guy? Because mono green stompy and Galta. Because Mono Green Stompy and Galta. This single handedly takes Galta down half. Yep. Yep. Half of its mana cost is gone with just this card. That's right. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we. Sorry, she. Right. Yeah. yeah. She. Uh, she turns on so many cards for Mono Green that yeah. otherwise you would not be able to play in Constructed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. there's a uncommon. Um, uh, what am I thinking of? The big, the Dreadmaw. Dreadmaw? Colossal Dreadmaw? Yeah, I think. The 6-6? Six, 6-6 six, six, six with Trample? Oh, with Trample. Yes, yes. Is it Vanilla? Trample. Or is it Trample? I think he has Trample. I feel like he has Trample. I don't know. It's reprinted a million times, so we probably I should know. know. <laughs> I know we should. Um, I wasn't, I, yeah. Oh, I was going <laughs> to say he costs four now. Um, yeah? 6-6 six, six with Trample. Maybe he's not what I'm thinking of. Hmm. Hmm. The important thing is that this really affects Galta. That's oh, like sure. the biggest for thing. Sure. That's so, the payoff. Yeah, the question that we pose to each other is how fast could you get Galta out? Yeah, yeah. And what, what did we determine? Did we say turn four or three? I think turn four. Because you turn one Llanowar Elves. Yes. That takes you, Galta down to 11 right there. You turn two Steel Leaf Champion. Which takes him down to six. You turn... Right, you, then you turn three, Gorkla. Right. So it is turn four. It is turn four. Um, um, Gorkla or... There's a lot of other options, you actually. You have a lot so of... Like, yeah. <laughs> you could turn four the uh, Trapjaw Tyrant. No, yeah. no, not Trapjaw. The, what's the green card that lets you play more lands? Oh, I should have looked it up. Oh, the 5-5 five, five that lets you play an yeah, additional the land. Five, five. Yeah, the 5-5 for three that lets you play more lands. Exactly. You can't like, attack or block until you have a lot But of theoretically, you right. could have a 12-12 out. Oh turn yeah, four. you just use it really to fuel. Like, so that's yeah. insane. That's turn four is like <laughs> we think optimal. Yeah, yeah, right. There. Definitely, right. definitely. And then you have some other cards that you can throw out that are mm-hmm. also pretty beefy. 
Which some will be uh, pretty scary. Glossing over later. Uh, yeah, monogram <laughs> seems to be. Um, uh, uh, what's the word? Really well sorted. Positioned. Right now. Positioned. Yeah. For a, a fight with the other decks. Yeah. Uh, specifically red, really. Yeah, and right? that's the hard thing. But I do think it now can outpower it. Yeah, I mean, especially it has the tools. Yes, especially when red kind of goes wide in a lot of ways. Yeah. With yeah. Goreclaw, you give everything trample. So run them over. Exactly. Yep. Um, exactly. I do think the hard part about this is the inevitability. And the only reason I say that is the good thing about mono red is has red, right? Sure. With it, that one card, they have enough momentum to kind of keep going no matter what. Yeah. The problem with the green deck is they it is creature based. They can just mm -hmm. kill it, and their Hazaret is very difficult to get rid of. Right. That's yeah, that's the sure. thing. And like here, if you play a Galta, like obviously you are winning on board <laughs> based off of just power. But yeah, yeah. Um, you can just remove it. Right. Like, sure. and it's not like there's anything that's preventing a removal spell from getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it makes it a little bit harder with the inevitability side of things. But I think the the speed that this can get that power out is insane yeah like it is just beyond i think what we've seen in a long time from pure green i think that's kind of cool yeah well to get so if if in our little scenario mm. you want to add up the power on board oh my goodness you get um lano r elves is 23 one. steel leaf is five that's six yeah uh plus four ten twenty two oh Steel you want to go with, you want to go with gore claw if we'll go with gore claw it's sure. 22 yeah 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 um yeah but like 22 uh, you know what I mean? yeah that's pardon uh, the dog in the background um <laughs> if you heard that no that's awesome 20 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 22 so that's on turn four kind of that's insane that's really that's good, really good. <laughs> so yeah that's obviously barring any yeah, kind yeah. of um uh interference yeah of course obviously. and that's always the, yeah, the you can you can right? exile a galta but exactly you know um, so the next card here is Leonin War Leader. This card is fantastic. So a 4-4 four, oh. four for 2 and 2 white. There's a cat soldier, so cat tribal, yay. Uh, still a thing. <laughs> so, is it still a thing? It could. Was it, it could ever be. a thing? I mean, it's going to rotate out in a bit. But anyway, when it attacks... It's got some time. It's a Cat, right? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. It is Cat. I was thinking it was before that, but it's not. Do you think it was Kaladesh? I don't know why, because it doesn't make any sense. Right. No, anyway, fine. when it's this fine. attacks, create two 1-1 one, one white creature tokens with a lifelink that are tapped and attacking. Yeah. Uh, so, this is insane. Yeah, call back to, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Bremaz. Bremaz, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Bremaz was stupid and limited. Yeah, took over games single-handedly. Yeah. This is also pretty stupid. So he comes out a turn later, but he makes two tokens. Yep. Uh, and he's perfect perfectly sad for his mana cost yeah you know he's four 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 gorgeous uh so this is pretty much just limited you think though um i mean people will experiment with this for cat mm -hmm. tribal for sure because it is a really powerful card i um, think in cat tribal it's really nice yeah i mean it's insane it's really nice. this with regal caracal is like kind of <laughs> like insanely good regal caracal you get um all cats you Johnny's control primate. get plus one plus one and have lifelink does a johnny's does the Johnny's Primate say Cat Soldier, or is it Leon? I think it's thing? Cat Soldier. Okay. Uh, which is also quite good. Yeah, I think um, so. But yeah, like, Cat Life Gain could mm -hmm. be a deck here. I don't think it's a Tier 1 deck. I just think it's something people are going to play with, though. Like, I think it's yeah. a little too slow. Um, but the power yeah. is there. Like, the curve out on 4 and 5 is kind of insane. Yeah. Um, it's just that, like, on 4 and 5, like we said, the mono green deck could have 22 power on board. <laughs> Whereas, that is, like, now you that don't, is true. You that will have true. a war leader and some cats. <laughs> Which are adorable. They are so cute. But, uh... Yeah, they, that's the do thing. Do not like, beat that. I don't think it beats it. But, I mean, I do <laughs> think it would be a fun deck to play, for sure. Yeah. Um, and that's limited, true. this is insane. This is oh, a yeah. game-winning card, for sure. Yeah, it kind of takes over. You're, so, for a bomb, it does a lot. It affects your board yeah. in a big way. It gives you three creatures during the combat phase, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Gives you lifelink, which, in limited, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes out before most other quote unquote bonds would yeah because it's a four drop right yeah turn four uh which is so nice yeah it just fits in that sweet spot right it's like it's warm. it's really sweet yeah uh let's stay in limited for a little bit let's talk about uh another card uh demanding dragon ah not super exciting but i thought it was cool yeah uh and i think you can make a case for it in mono red once um glory bringer is out I mean that's we're we're a ways yeah. off from that. Yeah, yeah. It's not awesome, but 
Uh, Demanding it's Dragon... limited bomb, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, five, five, for five with flying. When Demanding Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target opponent unless that player sacks a creature. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's like nothing but upside, no matter right, what. Right, exactly. So. Um, and a five, five flyer is nothing to be ashamed of. No, not at you all. You know? Uh, it outstats most things in the air if you want to talk constructed. Yeah. Uh, limited, there's a few cards I think that block it. Fine. Sure, um, but... But yeah, he's he's cute. He's I like cute. it. I mean, I, it's a cool card. I love it for limited. This is, yeah. again, a snap pick, I think, in any pack, really. Yeah. There's nothing you take over this, really. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. It's definitely the, the pick. Uh, the next card is I'm one I'm really excited about. Yeah. So Supreme Phantom. Uh, this is a 1-3 for 1 and a blue with flying. Already actually kind of decent, right? As far as stats go, like, not amazing, but for 2, a 1-3 with flying. Yeah, I mean... Like, that's fine. It's fine. It's, um, fine. it's not amazing by any means. I don't necessarily think this is a limited card, but it also gives other spirits you control plus 1, plus 1. Yeah, that is important. So, what I really like about this is we actually saw... Um, I don't remember if it was last modern season or sometime in the last couple years, we, ha- we saw Bant Spirits become a deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, for modern, there's a lot of good stuff for that deck. Yeah, this just fits right into that sweet spot for this deck. True. And so I'm I'm not saying that this is gonna make the Bant Spirits come back by any means, but I do think um it's worth looking into. I think this could bring that deck back to a competitive standpoint. Yeah, I mean you're right. So you think about Bant Spirits, it really it's two drops. It had a a. Yeah. A staple, but it wasn't like game breaking. Selfless yeah. Spirit is like the yeah, yeah. what I think of as it's it's well, and there's DQ also drop. um, what was the name of the card? The blue white spirit that exiled a card. Uh, wow, I am blanking real hard. Oh, you're thinking of the one with flash, right? Yes, it's three though. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying like, in terms right. of making that deck tick, that was a oh, really sure, good card. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so <clears throat> Supreme Phantom works um like any blue white deck wants to work in mm. that it's got uh like a very reaction based kit yeah you know it yeah i can't think of that name either god I can't either isn't that bo- that's very bothersome wow no and i love that card too <laughs> that's a shame i'll look it up while you do please this. do i can't oh, i can't do it um <laughs> but it didn't really uh it suffered from like this duality of it wanted to be uh aggressive but also kind of controlly yeah like blue white wants to be yep um this kind of helps it situate into that aggressive there it is spell queller spell queller thank goodness that was really bothering me (laughs) you know um how on turn two it just increases the value of all the other spirits because you have turn three lord drug skull captain yeah drug skull captain yeah something like that something like that wise and snitches bring it home just kidding <laughs> uh no it just it just makes everything a little more aggressive there yep um you know not super complex not a lot of no, depth stuff to talk about but that deck is we a- always see lords do really well right like i say always most of the time we see lords do really yeah, well most depending the on the deck if there's right. already an established deck it just means that this deck got a little bit better it's like the merfolk lord that we saw yeah. um in ixalan pushed uh the modern deck into right. blue green because sure. now it's got another lord you know what i mean so it's yeah. like it this just boosts it basically yeah uh kind of uh, puts it a turn ahead is sort of the idea that i have right right head. yeah and that's nice because that, yeah, yeah. that is a fun deck and it's definitely Absolutely. it's a cool deck it's definitely a kevin's wheelhouse all right uh we'll stay with lords for a second yeah talk about my new best friend goblin trash master interesting card yeah it's cute yeah. other goblins you control get plus one plus one ergo a lord sacrifice yeah. a goblin destroy target artifact so uh kevin before the show the pre-show if you will you made a point <laughs> um that this is really good sideboard tech in modern yeah um really for goblins kind of specifically oh yeah you definitely. Know? um but against things like uh uh help me out affinity affinity thank um, you affinity, lantern, control. lantern any artifact based yeah. deck really um yeah the cool thing about this is like this isn't necessarily a main deckable card only because it's a four drop and goblins they really don't want four drops most of Mm -hmm. the time but having this at your top end lets you like once you've kind of established your board presence once you've let them establish their board presence a little bit you can just kind of take this out and uh (laughs) sounds like a band (laughs) yeah um (laughs) comments on mythic spoilers are hilarious anyway it's true uh it lets you kind of run over the artifact decks a little bit right because you can just one-for-one trade-off cards that really shouldn't be one-for-one traded off you know what i mean oh yeah 
Um, Definitely. So it just makes it that much harder for the artifact based decks. I don't think this is an amazing card, but I do think sideboard tech for goblins, cool. All yeah, good. I think this will find a lot of sideboards. Yep. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I do like that they put that ability on there, right? Like, that's cool. It's kind of neat. I mean, it just adds some tech to it. That's all. But I dig it. Yeah, and I always try to think, like, how to make a card more playable. I don't think you really want to. No, I a think it's three, fine. A 3 3 for 4 that's a lord that destroys stuff. Like, you couldn't bring the mana cost down mm -mm. without, like, bringing the stats down a good yeah. bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So I, I like it. I think it's yeah. it's, it's good. a well-situated He's good. He's good. All right. We we talked about her. All right. We hinted <laughs> about her. But now it's time <laughs> to bring her to the forefront. Yeah. The most complex card we'll talk about today. <laughs> this is, is your thing. So. It is a 10-10 for five mana. What? Its text reads, <laughs> Each tooth is the length of a horse. New ones grow in every 16 days. Let's get a closer look. I forgot to read that as Steve Irwin. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> is that what you wanted to do? Yeah. Pretend I did that. Fix it in post. Uh, yeah. yeah Worth noting, the only reason they can pull this off is because it's five green mana. It's not just generic. Right. But yeah, like, yeah. that's the only... <laughs> five twees. Five twees. Five foes. Who get a is gigantosaurus. A so on Gigantosaurus's own, it makes Galta cost two, <laughs> which is uh, pretty mm, good. Stupid. And Somebody in the comments said, why doesn't this have trample? Um, um, for Galta 10 10 for five. What yeah. do you mean, dude? Because <laughs> it does everything. Because Goreclaw is going to give it trample. It's fine. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Uh, Just go with it, dude. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> mono green. They are throwing every a lot of stuff at this they're throwing every board at every table yeah they're giving it to mono green yeah because it's gonna own it it's gonna own it. promise you um <laughs> mono red doesn't i don't think mono red gets enough answers no mono red doesn't have anything that says destroy target a thing it just has a bunch of burn right so now they turn into uh Rakdos, you know, Rakdos yeah, yeah. aggro Rakdos midrange stuff but like that, that slows the deck down which is exactly what you want yep so green as all right i'm getting my soapbox for a second <laughs> green players we find ourselves once again in the position we need to be where we were made to be where we never win a tournament <laughs> but <laughs> neither does red <laughs> neither does any stupid deck yes we will fall on the sword that is not having hexproof. And we will die just so other aggro decks will die with us. Yes. And that's it. That's what green players were made to do. That's what this card is made <laughs> to do. Um, it's going to be really fun to play. Yeah, it is. Brothers and sisters. Awesome. We'll go I'm not even a green player. In like, a this blaze of glory. <laughs> I really want to build a mono green deck, and I don't like mono green generally. Um, but I think it's so sweet right now. It's just a lot of power. It's, it's gonna a be lot of power. For it's going to be very fun. little. Nothing mana. complex, but yeah. Um. All right. So the next card I want to talk about that I am really stoked about. So this is Mist Collar, one blue for a one one Merfolk Wizard. Worth noting, it is a Merfolk that gives tech uh, for the Merfolk decks in Legacy. So this, do what? That. Yeah, well. it's also true. Oh my god, it's better than I thought. Uh, great against Collected Company also. So this you can sacrifice, and then until the end of the turn, if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it was not cast, it is exiled instead. Yeah, that's so, nice. Uh, the point that actually somebody brought up in the comment section, which is nice, um, that against Aether Vial and against Collected Company, this just nerfs those cards. Yeah. Especially Collected Company, obviously, because it's a one-shot deal. Right. Um, Vile, obviously, you just wait till next turn. But, like, Collected Company, this owns it. That's uh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's um, great. Also great against, like, Sneak and Show decks, Reanimator decks, a lot of the, like, cheaty kind of thing, Oath mm -hmm. of Druids. Um, Legacy is, like, stacked. Merfolk, yeah. Legacy Merfolk is stacked. I would be interested to see if this hits any other decks other than just Merfolk. Do you I think, think it does? I think, yeah, I think you get to play it as a one of. Uh, or you not a one so? of, just as like a sideboard tech. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's just so efficient because it's one mana. So like exactly, you'll always. I mean, if you play, if you're on the play, you'll be able to get this out. Right. Which means you are kind of just protected against the early because yeah. Reanimator can very easily get turn one Grizzlebrand. 
or yeah, you can always. just sacrifice Miscaller. <laughs> and so right. like it just kind of shows like it slows the deck down mm -hmm. on the opponent's mm -hmm. side of the field it really protects yourself i think it's fantastic i think if you are in those formats though you kind of find yourself in the position of having to play like way more of these yeah, yeah. like they take they take four card slots i think if your plan is to i don't want to lose because they turn one something stupid yeah you know yeah yeah what's nice though is it also i mean it just gives you assurance throughout the game yeah they if they if that's their game plan and you know that or you're just reasonably sure yeah. they have to answer it yeah you know what i mean and how bad does it feel mm -hmm. to like force of will a mess caller or like oh man or like have to fatal push it or do some like removal yeah. spell on it like and that then just you feels sack bad it anyway. yeah you just sack it anyway and you turn you take them a turn off yeah um yeah miss caller is great insurance it's really cool. Um, I dig this card a lot. Yeah, I'm curious to see how expensive Miss Collar gets because Yeah, I'm kind of interested too because well, obviously at Merfolk it's in its best, right? But like Now, I don't know about that because it, it's kind of not Merfolk strategy. Are you talking about legacy Merfolk? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well I'm just talking oh, yeah. because it's a one one Merfolk for one, and it gives and like protection against those decks, which generally sure. Fish has a hard time beating because they just turn one Grizzle Brand, it's like, well, <laughs> You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> have what a hell of it. Yeah, exactly. So like, this actually like has some. I think main board stay in Murphy and things like that. Um, yeah, it doesn't. I guess as insurance and Curse Catcher is played, which doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't like forward. It doesn't. It's, it's protection. It's yeah. a protection card. Yeah. That's okay. It is. I can buy that. Yeah. I can cool with that. All right. Uh, cool. All right. We'll talk about this interesting card, Alpine yeah. Moon. Really Another moon red thing. <laughs> so for one red, it's an enchantment that says, as Alpine Moon enters the battlefield, choose a non-basic land card type. Lands your opponent's control with the chosen name, lose all land types and abilities, and they gain, tap, add one mana of any color. Hmm. This is a hate card beyond hate cards, right? But it's an interesting one, I think, because obvious, the obvious implication for most people is going to be Tron. Um, yep. If you're in Legacy or if you're in Vintage, whatever, Dark mm -hmm. Depths, any of yep. the land combo decks, um, this is obviously going to be great against those. Right. And it's awesome. However, you do give them mana of any color. I mean, and yes. Like, and against a Tron deck, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Yeah, and most decks that this is going to be against, I guess it doesn't matter. But it's like, I don't know, it's interesting. I, it's What I thought would have been kind of cool mm. is if instead of just saying you're, you can target your opponent's lands... Yeah, you can also target yours, and the only reason I say that is because if you're in like a five color deck or something like that, it'd be really fun to be able to just do this on one of your like forests, and then it just becomes any any land. Okay, you know what I mean? That'd like, been cute. It would just been funny. Like yeah. it's not. It wouldn't have been that. Yeah, good. change a few names, and I guess. Yeah. Um, I think though mm. this like clobbers modern everywhere. It's in every sideboard. Yeah, it's got to be. It yeah. has to be. It's so cheap. Like, you yeah. can do it turn one. The Resurgence of Tron is... I mean, I mean you can't ignore it, right? I mean, we just Tron's talked about in, it in GP Vegas. It's there been were like in every two, top eight I for think. months. Yeah. So, Maybe I mean, like this... the whole of the year. I mean, imagine yeah. prison decks with, like, this Blood Moon and the Megas of the Moon <laughs> just shuts down land decks. God. Um, yeah, it's Hope not interesting. you're playing red. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily need that many, I don't think, of the same uh, effect. I think you ditch, like... I think you would ditch either Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon for a playset of these. You think? Yeah. If you were running eight slots of Land Hate, I no, would ditch I one of the so. two. Because this comes out earlier. The other ones are both turn three. I think you could ditch Magus because it's easier to yeah, remove. But to remove. I think it's better still. Because it's, <laughs> it's, what is it, non-basic lands or mountains? It's the exact it's same, same right? effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah as so that, hit, that's, that hits so much more. I mean, it does, but, like, you only need to shut down one land to shut down Tron. Oh, if we're talking for just Tron, You know sure. what I mean? But the other and two like, what get other land fetch decks? lands and stuff. I mean, yeah, fetch lands yeah, and stuff. The other two take, a, take decks completely off their curve. That's fair. Which is That's nice. That's fair. Which you, you could do with this. Yeah, you could. Just you play could. two of them. Yeah. Give it ten slots of land hate. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Just make it fun. awful for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Lose all your friends. Uh, uh, last, well, not last card, but the last new card, I guess, that I'm kind of interested yeah. in talking about. There's two more we'll talk about that I just thought of, but this one's. Uh, actually, serious. there's a few more things that I wanted to talk about. Oh, uh, okay. Infernal Reckoning is an instant for one black. Exile target colorless creature. You gain life equal to its power. Obviously, this is Tron hate as well, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, or I'll. 
Emrakul, hey, if anybody's trying to pull anything sneaky. But like well, one of them's got pro instant. Oh, you're so right. That's so not... never mind. I don't know. I think one of them, not both, though, right? Yes, the old one has pro instant. Pro instant, I think. Okay. <laughs> I might be wrong. Um, but anyway, this is like when this was spoiled, I was like, holy crap, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. is. The problem with it, obviously, is that it's like ridiculously focused. You know what I mean? Like, it's super powerful, but only in one specific situation. Yeah. So, like, my question that makes. Are you trying to figure out it's who? Ulamog? Yes, but who is I the think. demon? Oh, I don't know. Because that's an Eldrazi for sure. In the art, there's a giant demon. Yeah. Who's holding an Eldrazi who's just about to squish it. Yeah. And I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is Does either. it look like Omnixilus a little bit? No, it's not Omnixilus. And it's not Grizzlebrand, obviously. Who the crap is that, dude? I don't know. I almost swore on our family <laughs> podcast. I'm so intrigued. I'm just interested in this card because I wonder if it'll show up in sideboards. That's really all there is to it. Again, though. modern, it's Modern, it's great. It's got, got like, let Tron um, play its things and bam, hit it with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's awesome, I think. It's super powerful. Uh, let's see. I just wanted to quickly mention the Elder Dragon cycle. I'm yeah. not going to go over each individual card by any means, but it's cool that they're bringing this back. And mm. I actually really like a lot of these cards. Um, I don't know. They're just kind of... I, I didn't expect them to bring Elder Dragons back, so I'm just kind of yeah. happy about that, honestly. Like, there's not much more I wanted to say other than that. Yeah, I mean, I think Commander <laughs> really loves them. Yeah, right. definitely. I mean, not they're even great. as Commanders, they're just fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one cute little green card that I wanted to talk about. And then I also had a couple of reprints I wanted to mention. Oh, because there's some beefy ones. Let me yes. try to find it here. Yeah. Um, it ain't that one. It ain't that one. What's really funny is I'm pretty sure it's a common. <laughs> but I can yeah. go ahead and talk about a couple of reprints really quick while you're looking this up. Do it, so, do it, do it, do it. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about, Omniscience. Uh, obviously a super powerful card. It's really only played in one Legacy deck, Sneak and Show. But it is super good. And I'm really excited to have that back. The other one, Scapeshift, which obviously impacts Modern the most. Uh, Scapeshift kind of took over Modern for at least one GP, but was really, really prevalent in recent uh, tournaments. And so I'm actually really stoked to have that reprint back because the card is like kind of stupid expensive. So mm. <laughs> it's good to have that back. Other reprints. Was there anything else I want to mention? I think those are the two that I really was interested in about. Scapeshift and... Scapeshift yeah. Omniscience. Um, uh, there's one more. Is there? Did I miss it? Crucible. Of oh, Worlds. duh. Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, Crucible is back, finally. Uh, we get a reprint for that. Um, I couldn't be more excited about that, to yeah. be honest. Crucible's ridiculous yeah. expensive. <laughs> yeah. And it's fun. The combo's fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. This is the card you want to talk about? You want to read that? I mean, I know what the card is. Go ahead. For Mono Green. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enchant Creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each. Yeah. Forced. Yeah, yeah. You control. Ah. Uh, you I mean <laughs> you didn't you didn't you didn't bolt my Land of War out. <laughs> Mistake. You can remove my dinosaurs, but sir, <laughs> it's turn five. That elf is a six six. Yeah. Good luck. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. <laughs> I'm so excited for yes, my green. Yeah, yeah. Um that is like I think the decks that stand out to me that get the best stuff that are in standard right now are Mono Green. Yep. That's kind of new. Yeah, yeah. Um, blue White, interestingly enough. And then Red gets its three damage spell back. Yeah. I think Lightning Strike is in this. Lightning Strike right? is back. Although we have Lightning Strike right now anyway. But it keeps it in standard longer, I believe. Do we? Yeah, I think so. We have a Braid. We do have a Braid, but I, I do think we have, think we have Strike. Lightning Strike. I, I think, think so. we did in um, we have Dominaria or something. No, we have uh, Wizards Lightning. We do have Wizards Lightning. I don't think we have I thought we had Lightning. Like, maybe not. Well, I we don't have think it. so. We have it for sure. No. I could be wrong. Um, I'm willing to be wrong. Um, you, how do you feel about the limited format as a closing? Uh, as a closing remark, I really am excited about this. The only reason I say that is because, again, it's simple, so hopefully we're going to get some new people playing it. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> Colossal Dreadmon. With Trample, we Does figured it out. Trample. And it is reprinted in this for like the seventh time or something. It's been in three um, sets now. It's so stupid. In like the span of a year, it was yeah. printed. Like, yeah, that's good. Um, but it's a core set, so it hopefully will bring new people in. I think um, some of the cards that we're getting for this are like super, super exciting. 
Um, I think there's more cards for like a, a few cards for eternal formats that I'm kind of excited yeah. about. Yeah. And so like, I think they did a good job with this overall. Like mm -hmm. I'm pretty mm -hmm. stoked about it. I was not excited at first. I just want to point out in terms of like the cards they were spoiling. Oh, sure. Like initially, cause it was all comments and uncommons and oh, right, obviously right, right. they're not going to be that great, but like I looked at him and it was like Suntail Hawk and like, I don't know if that's actually what Sun Tail Hawk is in this. I don't know. But like, you know, I mean, it's like one one flyer. It's like, well, cool. yeah, but yeah. it's a core set, right? You should expect that. Absolutely. Um, but it just sort of like hyped me down for it because I was like, okay. this isn't exciting at all. And then I was like, Crucible of Worlds, Omniscience, I've, Escape Shift. I like, bet they were banking on that. Oh I'm yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I that, think that was a kind of a smart a lot marketing of, move, that, which I don't say about Wizards ever. Wow, you're right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Way to be there. Oh, uh, okay. Wizards. Anyway, um, yeah, super excited. Obviously, um, we will be doing some stuff with 2019. We'll probably make it our new crack of box, I guess, once it comes I out, because it is standard so. legal. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, it's going to be hard is picking which green card I want to buy. <laughs> hmm. Uh, let's, while you decide, uh, let's go over our question of the week. So obviously we've talked about it's this already. It's going to be three weeks now for, this is the last week, I guess it is the last week. Oh my God. We have a week till our, we have a week. Uh, we need to get our crap together. Um, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So our question of the week is what do we, how do we want to celebrate our 100th episode? <laughs> Um, and we did get some more suggestions. All right, bring it on. <laughs> You're the worst. Uh, somebody said a giveaway, question mark. We do oh, plan to give some stuff away. Curious. I'm going to go ahead and ruin that. Uh, ah, somebody no, said they couldn't excited. second that more. And, uh, okay. that's good. Somebody said slumber party fashion show. That's the best I've heard yet. <laughs> somebody. I mean. <laughs> I, um, so I don't necessarily like this idea solely because we're not like particular to a format but somebody okay. said commander has 100 cards maybe do something super special for commander i like the idea of doing something special for commander but i don't know that we want to do that solely for the 100th episode only because we focus on a lot of different formats not just one uh if we were the command zone absolutely hey i'm gonna put us on the spot how excited would anyone be for a live streamed episode i mean tell us tell us all we'll do we'll do some of these things. Yeah, we'll hang out. Yeah, yeah, maybe it will be a slumber party fashion show, which I love. By the way, <laughs> that's a good idea. Somebody said crack a hundred consecutive packs again. We kind of already talked about that. Can't do it. Um, and then uh, somebody said a ten player five v five commander brawl, <laughs> which again is an undertaking. Uh, and also very specific. To oh commander. my god! Yeah, that'd be insane though. That game would go on forever. We could do a stream for something like that. I mean, we'd have to get a butt ton of people in. But like, I would need people who are very patient. Yeah. It would take all day to play that Ooh, game. Man. I also would need a judge because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so much would be happening. Uh, Juan, Ooh. the man that made 21 damage, just got his level one judgeship. So congratulations to him. Maybe he can hang out for our he can Skype in. player 5v5. <laughs> We're going to need a bigger table. Um, yeah, you're not. You're not wrong. I have a round table, but it don't see ten. <laughs> Doesn't see ten. Jesus. Yeah, guys. Um, we are gonna finish up obviously with our crack of packs sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Their link is in the description. I would definitely check them out. A great place to buy cards for sure. Uh, what is your gold card, Will? My gold card is Steel Leaf Champion, and mine is Squee. I did not get mine. Did I get mine? No. Nope. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got the Antiquities War. Good card, but not... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's constructive viable, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I definitely got the pick of the pack, though. Evra, oh, Alicine goodness, Witness. Um, that's pretty much it. I might pick Slyn Vada, the Rising Deep. Oh, you should. She's just a giant bomb. <laughs> yeah. I also should. have Goblin Warchief, which is a... I mean, it's cool, I guess. Which is Warchief, too. That's not Chain Roller, so it's not no, the good no, one. No, it's not the good one. I mean, it's good in goblins only, which is not really a thing, so. Yeah. I don't know. We've got a lot of lords, dude. Chain Whirler? I mean, Chief. we do now, but, like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's. In limited? In limited. No. I don't think it's good nope. at all. Negative. Uh, but, yeah, Slinvada. Probably be the pick. For me. That was easy. 
There was really not much in that back. No, it was pretty easy. It was pretty short. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We have 100 episodes coming up next week. Oh, Please, between now and then, let us know suggestions. Obviously, we will be recording, I guess, the weekend before. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have the next couple days to get some suggestions in. Yes. Let us know. I'm going to go take some Tylenol for my Dude, pounding head. I My back has been hurting like this whole time. I got sunburned today. Real I don't know if you can tell. It looks pink. A little pink. I normally am pasty white, so. That's true. Yeah. Like. What's, uh, what's between, like, Casper and Eggshell? Kevin's that color. Whatever that is. <laughs> Lipsy White. Lipsy White. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, so I got yeah, sunburned you... on my back real yeah. hard, and, like, it hurts. And I'm kind of, like, you know when you get sunburned really bad, you start to feel a little nauseous? Did you wear sunscreen? A little bit, not much. I put it on my shoulders and my face, but it was after I had been out for, like, an hour. So Did no one teach bad. you how to be outside <laughs> no, correctly? I, no, that's why I'm a web developer. And why I do YouTube so I don't have to be outside? When I was going to mow the lawn today, yeah, I had layers of sunscreen. That's good. I used like half a bottle. That's good. I didn't. <laughs> mm. I'm not burnt. Terrible. See how I'm just tan and beautiful? I'm very burnt. I'm not going to take off my shirt right now, but I'm pretty burnt. Weird. You do that every episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, thanks for sticking around for this episode. Hopefully you guys are excited about 2019. Obviously we are. Just the year, not the corset. Um, <laughs> but we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Results. <laughs> it's all me. <laughs>